Hey guys, Riley here with Dark Arrow. I just got these lights in the mail from Arrow LEDs. These are going to become the lights for the Dark Arrow 1, which is sitting behind me. I'm gonna unbox these and talk a little bit about their specs and details. Also tell you where they're gonna be mounted on the airplane and why we chose them for the Dark Arrow 1. And then if you stick around till the end, we're gonna hotwire these and show you how bright they are when it's dark out. So let's get into it. These are the lights for the Dark Arrow 1. For the wingtip lights, we've got the Arrow LEDs Pulsar NSP 12 volt units. And then for the landing and taxi light, we have two Arrow LED Sunbeam units, also 12 volts. Uh, I'll start talking through the wingtip lights and then work my way over to the landing and taxi lights. So, wingtip lights, as I mentioned, Arrow LEDs Pulsar NSP, they come as a pair. These are a three in one light unit. So each uh, has nav, position, and strobe lights. There's a red and a green light for the wingtip so you can recognize the left and right sides of the airplane. Uh, white light pointing aft, and then they have uh, white strobe lights that sync together. Also included with the lights, they have uh, mounting brackets so that you can uh, easily attach these to the wingtips. And then they also include a four wire Molex connector. You use this uh, if you want to make a break in the electrical lines to the uh, to the lights. So if you got to detach your wing and you don't want to cut your wingtip light wires, use these guys. We'll definitely be using these since the wing of the Dark Air One is removable. Okay, landing and taxi lights. Again, two of the Air LED Sunbeam units. They have the Molex connector kit so that you can remove them for service. As far as a mounting bracket, these each just have uh, four mounting holes at the four corners of the lights. Uh, as far as installation instructions and the latest technical details on these lights, that's all available on Aero LED's website. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. I uh, want to make sure you're getting the most up-to-date information, so check with Aero LED's for that. One thing I like to do anytime we get a part in the mail that's going on the airplane, I like to weigh them, so let's do a quick weight check. First, the wingtip lights, we're looking at 202 grams for the pair, so 101 grams each. And then for the landing and taxi lights, we've got 373 grams for the pair. Might be some useful information for anyone out there. Where are these gonna be mounted on the Dark Air One? I kinda already mentioned that with the wingtip lights, they're gonna be mounted on the wingtips. Uh, I've got one of them here. So this is a molded carbon uh, wingtip, which is gonna go out on the end of the wing. Uh, we're gonna drill a hole uh, for the wires to pass through as well as three mounting holes so we can mount the mounting bracket on here. And then these will go right on the little wingtip cap. The landing light might not be as obvious. These are planning to go on the landing gear struts. We have a tricycle gear configuration. So we're gonna put one of these lights on each main gear strut and then they'll retract in flight and be sucked up into the wheel well. So not exposed to the slipstream when in flight. Why did we pick these particular lights for the Dark Arrow 1? I won't go through the whole detailed selection process, but I will discuss the top three uh, criteria that we were choosing lights based off of. The big one was we wanted uh, LED style lights. There's different options for lighting technology. Uh, the big two being LED, the more modern one, and incandescent, kind of the legacy technology. Uh, LED is more reliable, less likely to burn out, and lower power consumption. So uh, Aero LED's light met that criteria. Second one being the form factor. Uh, the whole theme with the Dark Arrow one is uh, kind of minimalistic, optimized, aerodynamic, efficient. Uh, so for a light, we wanted something that was uh, pretty aerodynamic, compact, not creating too much drag since it's hanging out in the breeze, especially with these wingtip lights. Uh, they're permanently exposed in flight. Uh, so this particular light, the NSP, met the bill for that. Uh, same thing with the landing lights. Our plan to put them on the gear struts meant that they had to be a little bit smaller and compact while still delivering a pretty good amount of light. Uh, 
these sunbeam units are smaller, so we figure we can fit them onto the main gear struts, retract them up into the wheel well, and uh, fit them there. And with them being on the gear struts, they also had to be rated for uh, exposure to the elements or exterior use. Uh, the little sunbeam units also met that bill. Last thing we liked about these was just the Aero LED brand. Good, reputable company, American-made product, and uh, readily available. Okay, enough with all the talk. Let's head outside since it's dark and fire these up and see how bright they are. Okay, we're out on the taxiway right in front of the hangar. Got my little makeshift airplane on the card table. Got the wingtip lights and the landing lights wired up. I'm gonna demonstrate them. Uh, let's start off with the nav lights. So those are the green and red and white. So these would be on the wingtips, allowing you to tell left side versus the right side of the aircraft. Okay, let's add in some strobe lights. Try not to look directly at them. They're pretty bright. Okay, I'll show you what the landing lights look like. two landing lights. One interesting extra feature that we have with these air LEDs is there's an integrated circuit with the two landing lights that allows them to perform a wig-wag function, which is basically pulsing uh, between the left and right light. And I'll demonstrate that. The idea here is that uh, you're trying to have maximum visibility so that other air traffic can see you. So you might want to turn on this function if you're flying into a high traffic airport and you want to be seen by other airplanes in the sky. This would be pretty hard to ignore. So that's our lighting setup. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with the amount of light that these kick off. I think they're going to work. That's the basic lighting overview for the Dark Arrow 1. We're pretty excited to get these installed in the airplane, but we're going to save that for a part two lighting video. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.